Hey everybody, what's going on? Rob Sesternino here with Taryn Armstrong from RHAP, and we are very excited to have the chance to talk to the winner of Big Brother 25, the first ever sick winner of a Big Brother. Here he is, Jack. Jack, how are you? Hi, hi, I'm good. How are you doing? Uh, not as good as you, Jack. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, incredible. It's been one week. Can you believe it? Uh, I mean, it's, it's wild. It's been a crazy week. Um, I'm happy. I've gotten to see like a lot of my family and friends. Um, you know, they're the people after the big brother house that I, I mean, obviously I missed them so much during my time in there and I wanted to see them so badly. So I am, I'm happy to be home, happy to be around my loved ones. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's always, it's so, it's so like, it's a hundred days and then just like to immediately have nothing uh or no big brother at least like you're out of the house like i don't even for me like what like watching the feeds for 100 days and then <laughs> right. like the season ends i'm just like what like <laughs> yeah i'm i'm in the same boat like i keep thinking i'm gonna wake up tomorrow in the big brother house and this is all a dream so uh we're, we're all in the same boat like it because i spent so much time in there i really got like used to being in the big brother house you know like I, and so now i'm getting reused to life outside the big brother house which is um definitely a strange and unique feeling yeah but this still isn't real life yet because you're still in this crazy period that comes after big brother especially when you've won and there's all of you know everybody is like uh dying to talk to everybody who was uh locked up for a hundred days uh wh what's that been like with just like everybody wanting to talk to you now that you're out of the house but you're still like very much in this. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I've been lucky enough that I've had a lot of like overwhelmingly like positive uh, messages and a lot of support from people. Um, that's been the best part of all of this. Like, obviously I have my family and I have my friends that, you know, have supported me even before Big Brother and continue to support me throughout my time there. And now, you know, knowing that so many other people are, are sending me such loving messages. Um, it really does warm my heart. You know, a big part of me being on Big Brother um, and a lot of the decisions that I made um, was to make people proud, uh, make my community proud. And, you know, it is it is really touching to see all of that. Yeah. So, Jag, uh, going back to finale night, um, we had thought, you know, it was kind of going to be close between you and Matt. And I think a lot of us mm -hmm. thought that maybe Matt might have had it with this jury. We were right. surprised uh, that you didn't want to take Bowie to the end to go with you. Why were you so confident that you were going to win against Matt? Um, That is which the was wrong the correct decision, by ask. the way. Yeah, Um, I was not confident that I was going to win against Matt. And that's that's the, the truth of it. Um. I think my decision wasn't based uh, in who did I have a better chance against because that might have led to a different decision. Um, for me, it was based off of my character and the game I wanted to play. And I wanted to make a decision where I would be able to hold my head up high, even if I look back at this years down the road, you know. Um, so to me, it felt wrong to turn on Matt at the end you know he had saved me and you know throughout the game I had said I wanted to play a loyal game and play a game with integrity and Matt is the person that I chose to stay loyal to um to the very end and even at the end I knew that this might be a $750,000 mistake right mm -hmm. uh, a mistake in terms of like I would lose it but for me it really didn't feel like a mistake I knew that if he won sitting next to me then he is very very deserving of that win as well mm -hmm. um and it was important for me to make the decision that I would be proud of the decision, my family and my community and all my loved ones would hopefully be proud of as well. And so, um, yeah, I decided to, to take him to the final two, not knowing what the outcome would be. And honestly, I thought he would have a majority of the jury votes, if not all of them. And so I knew it was going to be an uphill battle for me. Um, you know, which is, which is why I gave the speeches that I gave the answers that I gave, because I truly was fighting for my life. You know, like I, I didn't know how much of a shot I had and I didn't think it was that strong, um, especially considering his incredible social game um, and 
knowing that he has such great relationships with the jury. Um, so yeah, that's that's sort of a decision I made, and it wasn't game based. Yeah, it, it felt like the most amount of momentum there was for you deciding to get rid of him was heading into the final four eviction um where you were really torn on your decision uh and like the morning of you had talked to bowie and she said i, I think you decided to evict him um and you said that you wanted to have a conversation with him um we ended up missing like a chunk of that conversation we just caught like the tail end um mm -hmm. but after the conversation it seemed like you had you'd said you made up your mind you're keeping matt uh was it the conversation that changed your mind? Was it something else? Uh, like, what was it that really solidified it into your head that like, this is this is my path moving forward? Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously, I was having conversations in the house, but more so than any external conversations, it was the internal dialogue that was happening for me. And um, if you saw me throughout the season with every decision or every move that I was making, you know, with my team, it was you know, I'm the type where I will analyze every move and every choice that we have. And I'll analyze it down to the core, even if I don't want to make that move, just so I know that that's the wrong thing to do or I know it's the right thing to do. And so I was having that, you know, internal dialogue a lot, um, even during that time. And I just knew at the end of the day, sort of what I just mentioned, I needed to make the decision that. I morally could make, you know, like my heart wouldn't let me um, cut Matt at that time. And it wouldn't let me cut him at the final two or at any point before that. Um, and so it was, it was that, that, that was the driving force for me. And, you know, definitely like, you know, talking to Matt to, you know, we made a commitment to each other and that was to stay loyal to the very end. You know, it wasn't to take the cowards way out and to get rid of each other right before the end. You know, that was never part of the deal. And we both um, were making his history on the show. You know, I'm the first sick on the show. He's the first deaf person on the show. And there's a greater purpose to to our story and to us being on the show that we had talked about before. And that also goes into the very tight bond and friendship that we had. And for me to turn my back on him and turn my back on the entire purpose uh, of who we are and, and you know everything we represent that felt wrong and so I could not make that decision but what about the mafia uh, Bowie, Bowie James was first Australian uh, yeah I mean part of the mafia I get that but look for me I had made a commitment to Matt you know like I love Bowie Jane to death uh she is like one of the sweetest people I've ever met and uh, she's been so supportive and understanding of my decision as well. I've talked to her afterwards and truly, truly such a sweetheart. Um, and it, you know, I, I had to make the decision that I felt mm -hmm. was the right decision and, you know, sitting next to Matt, whether it gave me, uh, better chances or worse chances, uh, that was all out, out of the window. Like I knew it was going to be tougher. I just had to do what I felt was right. Yeah. Can we go back to sort of like the darkest days of your game when, you know, uh, you had been evicted, you get back into the house. And I remember at the time where people were like, oh, okay, well, uh, this is going to be, maybe Jag is going to turn it around now that he's back in, he's kind of seen it. And like, I, I think we really thought that maybe, you know, this was going to be like the beginning of like a, a turnaround. It didn't quite go like that. Did you, like at like some of those like really low points in the game ever imagine that you could get to this point where you're standing here as the winner of this season well i mean that's the, like i never expected to make it that far um and i never gave up you know uh so that's like the the balance of the two like i believed in myself and i never gave up and i knew i was gonna have to persevere i knew i was gonna have to be resilient because that's who i am and that's um what i've done my whole life but to expect it to make it that far like I wasn't I'm not someone who's cocky I don't have an ego at, at all and so I was never like ah you know I'm gonna make it to the end and so for me probably the most incredible part of the season um but for at least my game um is watching my journey you know like every week after week I was in a better position you know every week and by the end, I was definitely in a way better position than you saw me at the beginning of the game, right? Like I got evicted and that was rough, right? That was definitely 
not the best point in my positioning in the game. And so it was, it was stressful. I mean, definitely not. Like I know that, right. I'm not oblivious to that. I'm very self-aware of the game I played as well. And um, it was, uh, it was a difficult position. It was stressful, but even throughout the game, like even during stressful points, I just remind myself uh, to stay so grateful for the whole experience, right? Like how lucky am I that I get to stress out about like a veto comp or an HOH comp when so many other people in this world have so many other more important things to stress about. So even during those times, um, I honestly was so grateful for the opportunity to even be there, even play this game that I love, even represent myself and my community. Like that was, um, you know, the ray of hope in all of this. Yeah, there there were like three separate times through the season that I thought I was going to be asking you this question uh, in an exit interview <laughs> because <laughs> I was like, okay, Jag's getting evicted this week. What are we going to ask him? Um, and the, the first question every single time for me was, why are you not ratting out Sari and the Alliance to to Cam or to like whoever, like the second week that you're on the ball and then to the third week again to Cam? Like, why? Uh, why were you so loyal to the seven deadly sins when you knew that there was other stuff going on that Sari was doing and, and Cam was so close to like making another move? Uh, like, what was the what was the thought process there? Yeah, I mean, I think what I was battling between is the loyalty piece and then being self-aware and being smart in the game. Right. Um, I knew Sari or other folks in seven deadly sins were aligned with other people as well. Right. Um, I think a lot of folks in the house knew that, but I had made a commitment to them that I was going to be loyal to that team. And we saw this play out in the final two. I mean, in the final three uh, as well, where, I was battling loyalty versus what I think would have been the, the smart move. Um, and so, again, it, it was the same thing then. I felt as though I was not just playing a game for myself, but also representing a lot more than who I am. And I didn't want to go in and immediately go against my word and not be loyal and not play a game of integrity um, and do anything that might shine uh, an extremely negative light on my community, right? And so I knew, like, I, I was loyal to them and I knew that they were working with other people, but there's nothing that I felt I could do. Uh, so I felt as though my hands were tied and that's why uh, a big change in my game occurred after there was, you know, the airing out of alliances that happened. And you might see, like, my game shifted dramatically after that moment because that's when I felt my hands that were tied before uh, you know, I was free from that. I didn't have to be loyal to this alliance or to people that I had, you know, pledged my allegiance to and pledged my loyalty to. Um, I could now play my game and choose who I want to stay loyal to. And that person was Matt. And after that, it was just game on. You know, let's play this game that we all signed up for, this game that we all love. And let, let's see who makes it f further, you know. So um, that's just what it bec became for me. Jack, over the course of the season, um, do you feel like that there was anybody in the game that made a big mistake that you were able to capitalize on? A big mistake that I was able to capitalize on. That's an interesting question. Um, I'm a big believer that like everything happens for a reason. Um, even things that are like mistakes, like I think they happen that way because they're supposed to happen that way. I talked about this, um, even in my final speech, like moments where, you know, obviously under Bowie Jane's HOH, Cam left, right? Under Matt's HOH, Sari left. Mm -hmm. And I think, I won't call it a mistake, um, but I think Cam was, from what I think, uh, going to stay loyal to Bowie Jane and going to go to the end with her. Um, but he left under her HOH. And I think Sari was, from what I believe, more loyal to Matt. And yeah. would have gone further with him. And um, so those are instances where I knew what was happening. And I won't say it's a mistake that happened. I just think it was something that was calculated on my end where to advance my game, I knew what needed to happen. And that is just what was lucky enough to happen.
Yeah, you played we, a big part in both those things. I sure did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I did. You know, like there are people that I had uh, a hit list of people that needed to go. And that included the entire house pretty much, right? But there was uh, threat levels for all of them. You know, like who's the most imminent threat to my game? Like who do I think would take a shot at me right now? if they won an HOH versus who would wait a couple of weeks. So like, what are the dynamics in the house? You know, if I get rid of one person, um, am I really only getting rid of that one person and there's no real blood on my hands or do I get more blood, right? Like the moment I get rid of Corey, America is going to going to be mad at me. I know that. But the moment I get rid of blue, is there somebody in blue's corner that's going to be really pissed off at me? Like these are all things that I had to consider um, and how social dynamics will change. So especially when other people were in power, like when Bowie was in power or when Matt was in power. Um, that was when I knew I had to work behind the scenes to convince them to get rid of people who were threats to my game, because that was the best way for me to be in a better position the following week. Yeah, we, we saw that um, Matt said, at least in the diary room, that he was at least thinking about maybe trying to cut you at the final four. Um, I guess two part question. Do you think he would have uh, if, you know, things hadn't changed? Um, and if he had, uh, would you still like have been a vote for him? How would you have felt about that? Yeah, I mean, the first part of that, like, I don't blame him at all for even thinking that. Obviously, I was going through internal dialogue as well and weighing all my options. And do I think he would have? No, I don't. Um, I think at the end of the day, he is a very, very loyal person as well. And he played the game with incredible integrity um, and we stayed loyal to each other. And I wholeheartedly believe him um, that he would have kept me. And if I am wrong about that, and if he did evict me, um, I am someone who keeps game and personal very separate. And I think that would have been a very smart game move as well for him. And so I'm not someone who would be bitter like that. Um, I've never understood bitter. I've understood bitter juries, but I've never been able to relate, I guess, um, just because I do separate game from personal. So uh, would he have my vote? Um, I, I think definitely I do think he has played or he had played an incredible game. And so uh, on a lot of aspects, on winning competitions and stepping up, on uh, playing an incredible social game and so i wouldn't be bitter and just not vote for him because he evicted me jack now that you've been out of the house and been in this like crazy social media world for the last week uh has there been anything that you've like uh that that's been going on in our world out here that's really been surprising to you yeah you know i mean i'm out here and i've sort of stayed off of social media as much as I can. Um, my main thing, uh, honestly, has been not figuring out what's going on like everywhere else, but figuring out, like I was in the house for a hundred days, right? And the hundred days went by and I was living my life in there, but so was my family. A hundred days went by for them and for my friends and for all my loved ones. And so right now I'm in a phase where I'm playing catch up and like checking in with my people, right? Like what's been going on with you? Like what, what happened the last hundred days in your life? Like what are exciting things that happened? What are things that like made you happy? What are things that made you sad? And just like checking in with them, because again, my people, like my support system means the world to me. You know, they, I've been so lucky. They've been so supportive um, at every step of my journey, not just in the big brother house, but throughout my life. And so they are my main focus as, as I've left the the big brother house. It's, it's, how are you doing? You know, like catch me up on you. And so um, that's honestly what I've been up to. Yeah. You know, uh, it, it, it can be really tough for, for family, like uh, on the outside, having to watch and not be able to do anything uh, to help. Uh, and then also all of like the social media and the fan base and um, you know, your, your brother was just such a, a, a fun and like good presence throughout the season. Like, uh, I think that like you should be really, I think, proud of like the way that he was able to navigate through everything. Like it was really cool to see. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, good on, good on, uh, jazz. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I know he, he did so much for me and he is like, I love him to death. He is my number one supporter 
in everything that I do. You know, I think I honestly think he was more excited about me going on to Big Brother than I was myself. Like he is that type of person. Um, he is not even one phone call, phone, one phone call away. He's half a phone call. You know what I mean? Like he will be there um, no matter what uh, and support me. And so I love him so much for that. I know he was he was probably more stressed out. My family was probably more stressed out about me than I was. You know, I was in there and I was like, oh, I really need to win this next comp. And like, I'm like, do, 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 like still living my dream, like in the big brother house. And there's all my like supporters and all my loved ones. Like, no, Jag, you're about to get evicted. They want to backdoor you. Yeah, I think I was more stressed than you were at times. Watching you. Like, <laughs> I would just be like, oh, la, la. like I trust everybody. I'm going to be loyal. And if I go home this week, I go home. And like, everyone's like, dude, you're so dumb. Like, please play the game better. Like, why are you doing this? But like, Honestly, it, it it is such a blessing. It's so funny, like talking to them afterwards, because I think they lost years off their life. And I'm out here just like living, you know, living my life. I was like, oh, it was so awesome. Like I made so many friends. Like it's, it's just funny. You know, on finale night, it got revealed about how Sari and Jared are mother and son. Uh, what was we didn't really uh, get your reaction to uh, any of this from the finale. What was uh, that? Looking back at your experience, uh, do things feel different? I mean, I don't know if you saw like the moment Julie revealed that I got up off my seat. I was freaking out with Matt. We were both just like, for me, I never saw it coming. The biggest twist of the season by far had no idea. Could have never guessed it in a million years. Like it was wild. And now that like I started to piece things back, like it makes so much sense. My first thought was like, damn, like we never had a chance to start with. You know what I mean? Like, Jared was on my side of the house in my alliance at the beginning of the game. Sari was on the other side. So that was never going to work out. We really were doomed from the start. Like, so now it makes sense because I remember when I was in the Big Brother house and like the alliance like just blew up and I was like, is this normal? Is this like what happens in Big Brother? Like I've seen other seasons and usually it's not like day three that an alliance just blows up. Like why would that have to happen? But it makes sense. And like even little moments, um, like, one, they protected each other so, so much. And that makes sense now. But at the time, I just thought like, oh, they're closely aligned. Mm -hmm. And also when Jared was evicted, like during the double eviction, and then there was the transmission that came down, Sari was the one who read it. And everything about that moment makes sense because when she read it, um, she started like laughing. And I remember in my mind, I was like, this is maniacal. <laughs> like what is happening why are you so excited that there's more people in this house like the point of the game is to have less people in the house and to make it to the end suddenly we have these two huge competitors that are coming back into the house why are we excited about this and now it hits me like that's her son that has a chance to come back into the house that's not just jared you know what i mean that's her son and so i feel i feel so dumb but like there's nothing I could have done to know this. I never could have guessed it. And man, like they, they played us. I'll say that yeah. much. Like I well, got played. Maybe sure. should you be giving yourself a little bit more grace in terms of like some of the things that really weren't working in the beginning of the game? How could you have known that you had a mole that was related to another person in the, that alliance? I mean, that that's very true. I, like, cause it really did feel like a lot of things at the beginning of the game just weren't working and i was like why i thought i would be better at this game <laughs> i remember thinking about that i didn't think i was gonna be that bad and i was like anything i'm saying just seems to not work these alliances i'm making aren't working and like i know definitely with jared um and in conversations i had like sari's name would come up you know it'd be like oh man like seems like she's uh you know doing a lot on the other side and she's in the middle of it all like and dude, I'm talking about his mother. Like that's, of course, it's going to go back to her. So, um, yeah, I mean, yeah. either way, I'm glad it worked out the way it did, though. <laughs> Imagine uh, Cam pitching to Jared, hey, I want to backdoor your mother. <laughs> dude, that's <laughs> but uh, how did it feel also learning that Blue knew about this secret since like week basic, like three or four? Look, I mean, Props to her for like keeping it to herself because that's a that's a huge secret in the house. And I I know 
at least like in the game, like she felt very loyal to, to Jared from, from what I saw. And so the fact that she was able to honor that secret, like props to her, but that's wild. You know what I mean? Like had I known I would have freaked out, like that would have been wild. I don't even know. Like, I think from my facial expression, you'd be able to tell that, uh, you know, there's a big secret that I know about. Uh, so she played it off really well too. So I'm, I'm very impressed. Jack, are there any things that you want the fans to know about your uh, journey this season that we might not know yet? Yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of my journey was rooted in, I knew I was the first sick player in the Big Brother house. And so even joining um, and being a part of that Big Brother family, you know, part of that cast, was the biggest step for me, was the biggest accomplishment and already a win. Um, I remember thinking like, I just don't want to be the first one to go. But also, even if I were the first one to go, I felt happy that I could be that that person, you know, that representative of my community. And so a lot of even like, you know, people ask me about game moves that I made and truly like everything was rooted in my identity and in making the right decisions and in uh representing you know more than just myself and making others proud and that's why even at the beginning of the game you know people have asked me why I played the way I played compared to the end and all that and like if you look back at those decisions it's because I had told people I would be loyal to them um and at the time I was being loyal to all of them um and eventually obviously that shifted and it became just Matt that I was loyal to and that's why the game went the way it went from my end, you know, that's why I went all the way to the end with Matt. It was, there was a, a deeper message uh, and a more powerful message than just, um, just winning the show and just the money, you know, um, mm -hmm. it was about the character aspect of it and the purpose of why we're there. And I think that was really integral to my game. Yeah, I know. And I'm sure you've, you've heard from people uh, already, but like, I know there were so many people throughout the season that were so uh, happy to see uh, sick representation in the house and just um, being able to uh, watch you play uh, by itself was just such a, a pleasure for them. And so um, I think there's there's a lot to be proud of in that respect. Uh, and the fact that you ultimately made it to the end uh, and won uh, is, is, is so huge. Um, do, uh, do you have plans to like, continue being on shows like what's what's the where do you go from here are you gonna play any reindeer games <laughs> <laughs> look um i'm not sure exactly what the future looks like for me i know the one thing that does remain true is that the journey continues right like a big part of me being on this show was representing my community and that doesn't just stop now um and so whether it is other shows you know i had so much fun on big brother um, so I'm definitely open to what other opportunities may look like. Um, and so whether it's other shows, whether it's something else, like I know I want to continue to use my platform and amplify, you know, voices and continue to represent, you know, that has been such a important part of why I did what I did. And so that is, that's what I do know the answer to. Yeah. Okay. Well, Jack, thank you for making some time to talk to us. I know you got a lot going on these days only a week after the show is over. So uh, we appreciate it. Congratulations again on the big win and uh, nothing but the best outside of uh, Big Brother. Hey, thank you so much. Uh, nothing but love for y'all uh, and take care. It's such an honor to talk to both of you. Yeah, thank you so much, Jack. Thank you.